The United Nations in Sri Lanka says hundreds of civilians have been wounded in recent clashes between government troops and Tamil Tigers. There are reports that the military has gained control of an area in the country's north which was once a stronghold of the Tamil Tigers. Aid agencies say thousands of civilians have been left stranded by the fighting over the past week. Sisira Jayasuriya is an associate professor in economics at La Trobe University in Melbourne. He was born in Sri Lanka and has been following events there closely. And Sisira Jayasuriya joins us now. Good morning. Um, Thank you for joining us. And uh, before we get to the humanitarian situation and talk about that, in your view, do you believe the end of the civil war there is now close? No. Why not? Uh, I think this is going to be another phase of the struggle uh, for, uh, by the LTT, um, primarily because uh, until now uh, there's no indication that uh, their main uh, military uh, battalions and so on have been destroyed in any way. Um, and their past masters in the art of uh, guerrilla warfare. They have done this before, and I suspect that uh, uh, what will happen is uh, they will lose territory, they will certainly lose uh, the capacity to control significant uh, areas, uh, major towns and so on, but they will melt into the, into the jungles and, and go back into fighting. Yeah, so they've lo lost their last stronghold in terms of a town in the, in the country's north, Surely after that they haven't got anywhere to go? I think there's no doubt that this is a very significant military setback for the uh, LTT. But uh, uh, these are regions with lots of, uh, uh, lots of jungles where these people have been operating for a long time, the last 25 years or more. The International Committee of the Red Cross is saying that about 250,000 civilians are trapped in the conflict zone. How, how dangerous a situation is this for those civilians? It would be extremely dangerous because it's a very small area um, from what I see in the map uh, where they are trapped. And it's not an area with uh, great facilities, uh, you know, medical facilities, uh, uh, food, uh, all of that would be very hard to uh, get across. And uh, with the fighting going on and, and the LTT encircled out there, um, I suspect that uh, these people would be the meat in the sandwich. There, there are some reports of 300 civilian deaths. The government is describing that as a hoax. What do you think the likelihood of that having happened is? Um, I suspect that it is very high that it has happened. I wouldn't uh, place my credence on uh, the, the statements coming from the government. I think it's a bit like what is happening in Gaza or Iraq or, or wherever. There's a ritualistic uh, uh, denial of civilian casualties. Um, independent so you think journalists. it's very likely in the last couple of weeks there's been 300 deaths? It is very, very likely. I mean, if you think of the area, the fact that hundreds of thousands of people are trapped in this area and the military is uh, encircling and, and uh, using heavy artillery and so on, um, you know, it would be, uh, it would be incredible uh, if there aren't major civilian casualties. In fact, uh, you're quite aware of and, and critical of a, what you call a bit of a propaganda campaign that the Sri Lankan government runs on this. Oh, indeed. Tell us a bit about that. Um, you know, for the last two, two years or so, the government has been uh, engaged in this concerted drive against the LTT. Um, and part of that has been the, the mobilization of massive resources, the economy is training at the edges. Uh, the government absolutely needs uh, to declare a major military victory before the economic crisis really hits. Uh, already it is, uh, it is really putting major strains. Um, and uh, in order to get that and get that quickly, uh, they really have to uh, show A, that they are winning, uh, which they are in many ways, um, and two, uh, particularly because of sensitivities internationally uh, and certainly uh, it's a major factor in South India now and in India overall, mm. but in South India, uh, the very sensitive issue of civilian Tamil casualties. So they want to ensure that um, the whole operation is seen to be a very surgical operation. Uh, we have seen this before in other, other global conflicts. Um, civilian casualties are denied. There are no civilian casualties, all precision uh, targeting of uh, military installations, uh, 
Uh, just not, not, not just not believable. How justified do you think are the claims to a separate state for for the Tamils in in that region? Um, yeah, I would phrase it differently in the sense how justified. Um, you know, there's in my view, I'm a Sinhalese. Uh, in my view, there is no doubt that uh, the Tamils have had systematic discrimination practiced against them, at least since uh, 1956. Um, and the majority Sinhalese governments uh, have never really accepted uh, the rights of the Tamils to uh, live in a in the sort of multicultural society that we see here, for example. Um, you know, they, uh, it was very clear just a uh, uh, few weeks ago, uh, the current uh, army commander made a statement that this is a country of the Sinhalese. Uh, the Sinhalese are 75 percent of the population, and, um, you know, Tamils and others should uh, recognize that they're a minority and, you know, we'll treat them well, but don't expect equality. It's a Sinhalese Buddhist country. Mm. Um, and under those circumstances, I don't expect uh, even a ma major military victory at this point in time to mark the end of this conflict. So in the Tamils' continued struggle then for a homeland, what sort of humanitarian disaster do you think this could bring about? I think in the immediate uh, term, what, what is likely to happen is uh, you know, these people are trapped. Uh, there will be, now there's much more international attention being paid. Uh, so I, I certainly hope that uh, civilian casualties would be uh, minimized at least. Um, but the continuing conflict will continue to inflict uh, civilian casualties. I expect that the LTT, once they lose territory, will go back into, uh, you know, more acts of uh, random terror yes. and so on, you know, which is uh, which had been their hallmark in the past. Uh, so I just don't see peace dawning, if that's the. Uh, Mr. Jayasiri, thank you for joining us on the program today. Thank you. Thank you.